week with, sorry, with James Shaw. I would love to see in the chat. How, I know, I know, Bonnie. How many of you were at the James Shaw event last Thursday? Uh, last Tuesday, Tuesday. Hello, last Tuesday. Put it in the chat if you were there with us. Yes, I love him too. Isn't he just absolutely like you just want to like soak him up, take him with you, put him in your back pocket and like have like a James moment, like have him like just say something that is just witty and funny and smart. He's what so different called? than when he was in bold. When he did bold, he was very reserved, very, you know, but this time he was like, wow. Put him in your shawl. Look. Look, look at this. Look at all these people that were with us. All right, now that I know that we have a big group of you that were with us, before we start off and launch our session three here, please enlighten us with some of your biggest ahas and action takeaways from last week. And Brooke or Tiffany, this is for you guys too, like what were your like huge aha moments while you, because we all had them by the way. So I can tell you that our agents are having huge ahas and they're ready to dig in because my appointments, there are none. The agents who are ready to go all into command and have me help them move things. My appointment schedule is full of people ready to make that leap to cut expenses. So I got super excited because it means you guys are ready to really slash some expenses for things you're not using and tap in. I love that. And you know what, let me back up a little bit because we usually just jump right into these things. And a lot of times we have people come on here that don't know who we are or what we're doing. So let's back up for a quick second. And uh, Brooke, would you introduce yourself and then Tiffany? Yes, absolutely. So I am Brooke Silva. I am your regional technology trainer, AKA your nerd. And I'm here to make technology accessible and fun and easy to learn. Um, and I'm a resource for all of you in the region. Tiff. And I am Tiffany Hampton. I am the regional productivity coach. I help your productivity coaches um, and some of you grow your businesses and have the life by design. And uh, my name is Jen Bovey. I am the area director for the New England region. And my main purpose is to host events like this and to work with our team leaders. So I am super excited to be able to jump on calls like this with you guys and really have some fun for one hour of just learning, implementing, and you know, being here. So thank you guys. I do wanna turn it over to the chat section and I ask for ahas and it says Market Center, who are you? Market Center, who are you that put in the chat? It says we need to stop saying dumb stuff. That would be really weird if we didn't know the context. So, so Market Center, where are you? Who are you? That may be our North Central friends. And I don't know if their training room can get them. We'll see. We'll give them a minute. All right. So we, we could explain that. If they can't come off mute, we'll explain it for them. During James, uh, James Shaw conversation, he said we need to stop saying dumb stuff. And some of the dumb stuff that is being said is, uh, Brooke, do you have an example? Um, basically repeating anything that the news, the national news and feeding the fire of social media. Right. And, and saying that we're absolutely in a shift. You know, what James said is that we, he never said we're in a shift. We're talking about a shifting market, but what a shifting market is, is a downturn. We're not necessarily in a downturn. We're in a moving market. It's not bad, a shift is going down, right? So, so what he said was stop saying dumb stuff like the market is not well, things like that. Right, because right, are we what still else? in Those a are seller's hot. market? Are we Say still in the seller's market? We're not. Who said we're not? Amanda, Amanda Howard. What kind of market are you in? Uh, we're in North Central. Right. But I do handle most of Middlesex County and Southern New Hampshire. And most towns that I work in are at less than one month or less than two months inventory. Yes. Yeah. So, so Amanda, is that considered a shift? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a change, right? And that's the conversation we need to have, but we need to be having those at the consultation, 
not when offers don't come in the first weekend. Yeah. Okay. Our market went from 0.7 months of inventory to we're at about two months inventory. That's a change in the market for sure, right? But yeah, still we're still in the seller's market. We're still in a seller's market. So I think that's the conversation he had with us to start off the day was to, you know, when he said, stop saying dumb stuff, what he meant was get knowledgeable in your area and really have the right conversations for your market. Is that what you heard, Amanda? Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. What other ahas? Did you see anything? Did I skip any other one, Brooke or Tiffany? Free pricing discussion. Start 10% below uh, market value or have a price reduction plan if needed before. Like that's a conversation. You got to set that expectation before you even start pricing the property. And that was Lori who is there who said that one. I guess and we have the tools to do the work that needs to be done. We just need to implement them and do the work. So I'd like to ask a question on that. What tools in, in particular do you need to implement? And I don't know who that was. So if you're able to un unmute, unmute. Yo, that was me. Command. Um, command. Um, we have command. We have the scripts. We have the media posts already done for us with the Monday. Um, I forget what they're called, meetings. <laughs> uh, we have all the things we need given to us or like provided to us through KW. So we can just use those. And from that, we can move forward and do the work that needs to be done. Ashley, were you at the James Shaw event? Yes, ma'am. Yes. What would, did you take, put anything into action from that day? Absolutely. I started using, so not from James Shaw specifically, but um, the last video conference we had, knowing the numbers like Nanda had just discussed. I'm from the same market center, but so our numbers are the same. Um, but using those things, you can give use that to put perspective towards your buyers and your sellers so that they're actually aware of what's going on. And that gives you your value and they see the value in that. And they're using you over other agents or just going at it on their own. That's my favorite thing. And if you've been on any Ignite session or anything I've actually been on to teach, Brooke, what do I always say? No, yeah, numbers. <laughs> know your numbers, kids. You I know, know your wasn't. numbers. <laughs> so thank you, Ashley, for saying that. Okay, you ready? Anything else before we dive in? Brooke, Tiffany? Let's hit this. We have a lot to go over today, guys. We are in tactic five. This is session three, tactic five. If you remember, we did one through three, we did four, and now we're on five. So we are on tactic five. And this is lead capture and conversion, because we've heard it said many, many times by KW and people all throughout the industry, we don't have a lead capture problem. What we have is a lead conversion problem, right? How many of you have let something sit how many of you have not followed up because uh, they only have an email or, uh, they only have a text or they didn't get back to me the first time. I don't know what to say. It's cold. So conversion and getting to the table is what matters. Really quick on that before, how many times does it take before somebody reacts to you and actually acknowledges you? What's the number of contacts to get to that conversion? 11. I like 11. that. I heard 11. What else did I hear? I'm seeing 10, 10, 12. 12. So if you make, if you're a one and done, where, where are you at in the conversion realm? You're at zero. You are, you're not converting. You're not going to get to the table. Capture and conversion go hand in hand because guys, if you're not getting leads, you're not converting them. If you're not converting them, you're not going to get more leads. It's that awful yin and yang cycle that we need to break. Now, market factors right now, and well, as we talk about the shift, we know that we're going to get less leads, but doesn't mean that the quality of the leads or getting to the motivation are different. And it's like we said, it's all about getting to the table. You can still have a large number of sales right now. You can still have huge number of sales in a seller's market. It's a low conversion rate, but it can still get you a ton buyer's market, low conversion rate will produce a small amount. So what we're going to talk about today are some systems, models, scripting, all kinds of different things that are really going to help you guys put into perspective what we need to do during the shift. And Jen, what we know, right, it's going to test their skills in the following. 
right? So it's capturing, connecting, closing, cultivating, and holding you and your team accountable. You may not be on a team, but you still have a team. And we've learned that in other shift topics where it could be your lender, your transaction coordinator, your admin, people in the market center, your coach. So take a minute. And what we want you to do is write down on your piece of paper, type it to yourself in a text. How can you stay on top of these skills? How can you stay in perspective on these skills above and just take a minute and if you want to share with the group pop it into the chat on how you can stay on top of these skills so i would take each one of those bullet points this is what i would do if you know when when doing this activity i would take each one of those bullet points capturing leads what are you doing currently to capture leads Write that down and then then add one or two things that you could be adding on to that. And then connecting with leads, what are you doing currently and what could you be doing? And same thing for the rest of them. That's how I would I would bullet point this list. And when I think of capturing leads, I think of MOFRs. And we had a great conversation the last time we were on about MOFRs, right? Like, how do we capture leads? Can you remind us what a MOFR is just for maybe some people who weren't on last week? What is somebody from our audience? What's a MOFR? Saying my Jersey accent. Make, <laughs> make, make offer, offer, offer for offer immediate offer. Response. response. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> make so, an offer for immediate response. Yes. Thank you, crowd. That was great. <laughs> so an offer for immediate response could simply sound like thinking of putting your house on the market um, in the next two weeks. Reach out to me for your staging interview or whatever. Right. right? You need to sell your home fast. Yep. So Laura said asking questions that require an answer. Yes. yes. It's always about engagement. All right. Let's keep going because how we can do that is stuff like today. It's tapping into coaching and being prepared. It means doing the scripts, the real plays, the role plays, but also it's understanding your own behavioral styles. If you have not had a KPA, please reach out to me and I'm going to help you facilitate that in your market centers shows you how you learn, it's like the disc, right? If you haven't taken the disc either, let's look into that. But if you're never going to do a cold call, a technical cold call or call FISBOs, then why are you adding that to your lead gen and capture, right? If it doesn't fit your personality or behavioral style and it's way outside of your comfort zone, you're gonna put it on, you're never gonna do it. And then you're gonna feel like you haven't hit a goal. So let's work within our personality styles and our behaviors and go with the things that we know we can do. We had a great conversation earlier today about fearful and fearless, right? Yes. A lot of us are fearful until we know, and then we I become know. fearless, right? So being prepared, scripting, role-playing, understanding behavior styles, that gets you from the fearful to the fearless. Right, and it's okay to need help. And I've always said this, you want to hear me say it to someone, you want to watch us do it, then you want to practice it and say it in your own words. You've got to do things on a different level. That's okay. We will get everyone there. It just may not be the same path for me, who is someone who is fearless, where I'm not saying Tiffany is, but if she was fearful about th certain things, we'd have to go through a different path. And that's all right. So what are the four steps to conversion? And Jen, where was this? This was page 83? 87. Uh, wait a minute. Mm, hold on, I'll tell you. 87 in our book. So we know in a shift it creates urgency, right? So, so Brooke, I just want to answer uh, Eric's question really quick in the chat. It says, what are some of the best sources for motivated seller buyer scripts? And Eric, I will tell you, I'm sure that, that Brooke could drop it in the chat before the end of class today. Uh, in Ignite, we've had uh, script books for, for this particular uh, buyers and sellers. Brooke, do you think we could drop that in the, in the chat section before the end of class? 
We will. We'll get that in there. And if not, I have the list and we'll get it out to you guys via email or in the shift group. Make sure you are in our shift Facebook group. We drop a ton of resources there. But also we go over that in a little bit. Page 96 is how, what can you say to find the motivated indirect, direct, soft, hard, close. There's going to be all kinds of that in shift for you as well. So well, when, yeah, when you're thinking about what the and let's Let's replace the word scripts with conversation, right? Let's have a healthy conversation with folks. And how do we have great conversations? We ask them great questions. 90% of, the, of the, what we're looking to do will be solved when we ask great questions. Right, we've said it in past shifts. When we say legion, we want you to say relationships. So when we say legion, you think relationships. All right, so let's talk through this chart real quick. Jen, you want to take this one? Sure, yeah. What we have first is capture. What does capture mean to you, Tiffany? Like what capture is, where are they going to cut? Where are you catching them from, right? So what's a great way to capture? You can send out a mailing. You can do a social media post. You could circle prospect a, a neighborhood. So where are you going to capture? And it comes back to the MOFA, right? What's going to cause them to give you the information? Love that. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many ways to be able to capture. And there's a reason why that, that triangle is upside down and that capture box or area is so large is because we really do have to capture a ton of leads to be able to get down to that convert section. So capture, you could do a lot of things to get that capture filled. And then from there, we have to connect. What does that mean, Tiffany? It means follow up. It means speed to lead. It means if you think that calling them the next day after viewing the lead, you're already too late because there are others who are getting the same regurgitated lead, but they have speed to lead systems with auto emails that go right out. So what, what systems do you have in place to connect? Are you using smart plans? Do you have a system where as soon as somebody clicks go on an ad, they are emailed info from you, and then you are sent a task to follow up with them on the next day or that day if it's within business hours? That's how you're connecting. Are you calling, emailing? What does your speed to lead look like? And actually, you should think about the connecting piece before you spend one single cent on placing an ad. Well, and I always love to tell people it's not personal. People forget who you are every 11 days. So if you're not staying in touch with folks in 11 days, that next realtor that reaches out to them, they're now top of mind. So what does it look like to stay in touch? Yeah, it's confused and delight, right? If you if you're not staying in touch with your clients regularly, some other agent is. It's is this my girl? Confused and delight. That's what and they're doing. From connection, you know, Gary Keller says this is a contact sport, and and that is that middle section. It, and he says if you haven't mastered your own database, you have nothing else to master. So if you're in the spot where you really haven't mastered your database and you haven't been in contact with everybody in your database, don't leave there until that's done. Get there. Let me tell you something. Your conversion is going to be easier. Your closing appointments and conversion are going to be easier once you get to the point of mastering that database. So you got to connect with them. And then you, then the next portion is close the appointment. I love close the appointment. I am all about close the appointment, right? Because at the end of the day, what is their objection? So other than wanting to interview other agents, what else is important about holding off on our meeting? And then when they give me that objection, I solve the problem, I solve the objection, and I say, is tomorrow at three or Friday at four work for you, right? Oh, I need to interview other agents. What part of, the, what part of our conversation did I not answer your questions in right like where where did i not get you the information so based on what i shared what is the reason you know what do you look is there something i didn't answer and then based on that i say 
well, is it that you need to interview other agents or you just don't want to disappoint them? Because I will gladly call those other agents and cancel the appointment and see if they have a buyer. Oh, I love it. So that's, and that's a really good one, by the way. I hope, some, is, I hope someone wrote that one down because it, it really is a great one for if you know the other seller is meeting with other realtors. Here's the thing. There's a NAR statistic that sellers are typically only meeting with one, the most two agents out there. So are you the number one? Because most, most, I think it's like 87%, Tiffany, you could probably correct me if I'm wrong, you know all these stats. It's something like 80% of sellers only meet with one realtor. Oh, yeah. How do you be that one? Crazy. Crazy. Well, That's let's go back to the database. Like, yes. For every 100 people, there's three and a half pieces of business in there, right? So where are you wrong? And it's their mindset. It's often... People are so often scared that they're going to be pushy, but then they get mad when another realtor signs in the yard. If I had just, if I had just stay top of mind, right? So don't be pushy. There are ways to bring value. We don't have to vomit real estate on every conversation. How are you building relationships in the shift is going to be massive because that's how we get to conversion. Conversion is the next step. So what does conversion mean to our audience? This is what I want to know. What does this mean to you in your business or where you are in your real estate world right now? Put in the chat, what does conversion mean to you? Customer to client. Customer to client. Okay, what else? Client to close. What else? Okay, what else? Client for life, buyer's agreement. Yep. What else? What else? More? Conversion means client is ready. Lead to appointment, getting an appointment, setting an appointment, closing, lead to appointment, etc. Now that now you're working together is a conversion, action time. There. There's the last one. Look at that. Does anybody see what Jessica put? Referrals. Everybody forgets about referrals as a conversion. Yes. All, all of those are right, by the way. All <laughs> of those are right. He just loves that one best, right, Brooke? <laughs> that's well, that's the one that's left out, right? How how often are we upset when we see somebody's moved out of town, but yet we weren't part of the process? Have we made sure that the people in our database who are ready, willing, and motivated to make a move or buy elsewhere go through us for that and we get the referral? That's one of my big ones that I'm hot on. Can you tell? Can you tell? This is one of my favorites, ready, willing, and able, right? They're ready to go. They're willing to do it and they're able to do it. My favorite one there is willing, right? Because we can have 20 buyer agreements they're ready, they're able, are they willing? And what questions do you ask around the willing to find out if they're truly motivated? Well, and here's the bigger question. Are you tagging your database or labeling people in a way where you are focusing right now on the people who are ready, willing, and able as your primary lead gen and then working the others in to get them or find the motivation? Because if you are calling the same people who are unmotivated, is that truly lead gen? Or is that just skirting the hard conversations or the ones you think are gonna be, you're fearful of? So Karen, I'd love to learn more about your question. What would happen if you didn't move? Is that a question? Is that one of the questions you would ask? I love that. Question. Yeah, to find out how motivated they are. Absolutely. And if they're like, eh, I just won't move. You're like, well, I guess you're not too motivated then. <laughs> right. And this is where, you know, are we taking the time to do the upfront conversation to save us time at the end game? Are we just going out and being a door opener and praying? Because praying or wishing is not, not what we're supposed to be doing, right? So are we actually having the conversation and saying, if you do not buy a house, what is the impact? What is the impact on you? What is the impact on your family? Do you have a contingency plan? What is the contingency plan, right? If they have a contingency plan and the contingency plan works for them, 
they may not be motivated. Right. So yeah, Tiffany, in the chat, Jessica's asking if we could share some questions you would ask to see if a seller or buyer is able to buy. We have 120 people on this call. If you have a great question you use when determining if the buyer or seller is, is able, put that in the chat. And Tiffany or Brooke, do you have one in, in mind that you could share? Actually, Karen's is the one I've used in classes before. What would happen if you did not move? Because and the other part of the able is, do you have your financing set up, right? Yes. Are Walmart. you currently working? Like, I know that's really simple. And yet if they're not working, let's not take for granted what our clients or customers know or don't know. Many of them think they can buy a house whether they have a job or not, right? I love life changing, life change coming, right? Do you have, and, and I, do you have four children that are sharing two bedrooms and they're gonna kill each other, <laughs> right? Have that conversation. They need to buy a house. Or the kid who wants to propose to his girlfriend at the closing, maybe he shouldn't be buying the engagement ring during that process. It's a big chunk of change. Or do they have a planned job change? Because those are all things that can hurt the financing contingency. Yep. And we've That's seen it reason. happen because we talk about it. So what we know is that if you've got questions, keep putting them in because guys, I will pull these out of the notes and add them to um, the Facebook group for us. But what we know is every lead has three motivators, right? They're now, which means they're ready, willing, and able. In the future, it's up to you to determine what that future span is. Is it three to six, six to nine, five years down the road, or never? If somebody is a never, giving you perfect permission to put them on a monthly drip and not call them anymore. Why are you wasting your time with them? If they are a never, put them on a drip so they get something from you and Focus your energy on the people who are in the now or the future. And guys, I don't know if you saw it in the slide before. These are tags. Put these as tags. Sort your database or filter by these tags so you are only looking at the people. Who are your preferred customers? What are their profiles? There you go, back in there. Does your prospecting and marketing target these people? Remember, marketing is not a one for all. Our messaging should never be a one for all. The messaging that works, the mofers that work are gonna help you pull out the motivated in your database. But if I just bought a house from you and you are slamming me with emails of open houses for this weekend, you're not in my motivation. You're not hitting the mark with me. What should you be doing? What, are you, what email should I be on as a new client who recently closed? Are we making sure that we are matching the market to the uh, our marketing to the market of now and the people to the right messages? It is not a one for all at all. And that's how tags will set you free on that one. I always and say if someone's not thinking of buying or selling or investing in real estate in the six, next six months, what are you delivering to them? Right. And then with that being said, every once in a while in whatever you are delivering, and I use Fourth of July, for an example, send them a list of fireworks in your area. And then at the bottom, you know, add a mofer. Yep. And that'll help you determine who is ready and able and motivated and going to pull the trigger on certain things. And we've got to be careful in our own profiling. How many of you have had somebody who is a buyer go buy a vacation home in another state without talking to you? Just had it happen to me and my husband. It's not a pretty feeling. It's not a pretty yeah. feeling. So what are some methods of capture? We've talked about a few of them, but what are the current tools you have that are either low cost or no cost at your disposal at KW that you could capture people's information? Put it in the chat if you know. I kind of got the giggles out of the old shift materials at some of the things, like a mail-in from a newspaper where they cut it out. And I was like, oh. So I'm hearing yeah. Facebook ads, landing pages, um, open houses. Yes. Right. Open houses are the best. And if you use your KW command app, you can have that. My friend Sandra out of Gateway has the most fantastic thing she does, where as she's meeting and greeting people, she's putting them on if they're not working with another agent. And she asks them, do you plan on going to more open houses? 
And when she says, yeah, she goes, great. What I'm going to do is here, is this you? This is your cell phone. I'm going to text you this app right away. And if you have any questions about the homes out there when you're shopping, you can pull up all the information here. Let me see. Let me see your phone. Make sure you got it. Oh, you didn't? Do I have the right number? Oh, okay. Oh, you made a mistake on the paper. Great. Well, let me fix that. And I'm going to send you the app right from here. And so they walk out. They've got her app. They've got her info. She's got their info. Your app is magic. Yep. Your app is magic. So reverse fold 100. Tara, can you share with everyone what a reverse fold 100 is for those that have not been to bold? Uh, sure. It's so um, it's it's basically doing something that has the people contacting you, wanting that they're calling into you. Oftentimes, some kind of raffle. Um, I mean, I think that's the most frequently an effective use um, is uh, giving away something and basically putting it out there that um, they can come in for, um, you know, maybe they get one entry um, for themselves and then refer a friend and get an extra entry, an extra entry, you know, refer some real estate kind of thing to get five extra entries or Absolutely. something like that. Um, so those are, those are great ways to have people come to you to just start those conversations. Absolutely. All right. So now we have, once we capture them, what do we do? You got to put them somewhere because if you don't, they don't exist. It doesn't, listen, I'm at a point where I just need you guys to put them somewhere. <laughs> put them somewhere I can work with anything, but if you're trying to remember who to call, when to call, why you're calling, and then you miss things, you're hurting yourself and your business. So you have to put all your leads in a database and you have to tag them as such. If you have not had a two-way conversation, two-way, that means they talk back to you. They are a lead. Once you've had that two-way conversation, that's when they become the met. Use those toggles in command to help you sort your database so you know you have to validate their current needs for their housing. Create tags as you onboard them. What do I know about them? Jen, why is, why is Brooke so passionate about this topic? <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. She's, cause she knows Brooke is called Liza. I said, <laughs> Brooke, her, her title is regional technology trainer for the <laughs> region. So she might have a little passion behind some technology in particular command. Well, and let's just talk about like, let's, let's just get rid of the passion piece. How much money do we as agents leave on the table by not doing this one action? It's, it's a system, smarter, right? It's harder. a system. And you know what? Here's the thing. You can keep doing your business the way that you're doing your business. Yeah. If you're looking to have a system to grow your business and to meet the goals that you have set for yourself at the beginning of the year, or maybe you just started now, you have to have something in place to do it. And, and this is the sure way to get it done. Absolutely. All right. And what I love too is I wish smart plans had been here when my first, my husband first got into the business because it's base it's lead gen. It tells you who to call, when to call, why you're calling. And they even have the dialogues in there because that's how we build them. So it's, it tells you what to do every day. So take a hot minute. I want you guys to describe on a piece of paper, what is your current capture system? But more importantly, do you have speed to lead? What is your first step in anything where anybody clicks? And now what improvements can you make? So one of the big things I am pretty big on is making sure that an email is the first thing that ever goes out. Because do any of you ever find you've got your Zillow wine clickers that happen at 1130 at night? They demolish that bottle of Miomi. They are like, you know what? I'm sick of the kids. They're always fighting. And now they're going to sit there and they're looking for properties. They might not remember searching for properties in the morning, but they're going to get an email from you, from your information that says, hi, thanks for clicking on this property. If this email came out after 
miss hours, I will be in touch the next day. Yep. What happens now in your world if somebody clicks? Well, and let's like, so that's how you capture it, right? Who do we want to capture? Like what, what are some of the opportunities? Open houses, the, the Facebook ads that you're running, you know, the, if you're circle prospecting a neighborhood, right? So each person that you're bringing into your database, that capture system is going to be just a little bit different. And yet it's going to be systemized because when you systemize it, it gets done. Because how do you lose with, how does Tiffany lose? Never mind. how do you lose with Tiffany? Tiffany loses when you don't have a system in place, right? Correct. So. Tag it, bag it, put it on a smart plan, set your little soul free. Your lead gen soul will run free with that one. It's my favorite. So here are some best practices when it comes to it, right? You've got to answer your calls immediately when you can. Obviously, if you're in your dentist appointment, Jen Bovey, you should not be answering, but you do. Because it's I you. Do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Answer. Like it, answer. I do. Answer all inquiries. Even if you have um, canned responses set up, right? So that way you quickly, you know what they're going to ask. We know what people are going to ask. You have something ready to go, copy, paste, boom. Why do we Don't say five minutes? Oh, because have you met me? I'm one of those who is fearless and moves fast. You don't answer me. I'm going to find someone who is going to answer me. They may not be the right yeah. or the right fit. Or I've forgotten why I even why you're even calling <laughs> me to start with. World, yeah. have you met me? Have yep. you met me? And the other thing is, we only got a minute or two to create a positive. If you're picking up the phone, you're like, "Yeah, what?" <laughs> Please what? don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Check your voicemail. Oh, Valerie, the five second rule. Do you do you know Mel Robbins? Are you a Mel Robbins fan? Is that why you put that on there? Yes, I agree with you. Five second rule. Hey, listen, you know, just mentioning about the calls and answering them immediately or as quickly as you can. Here's the thing. That does not mean that you have to answer a call at 10 o'clock at night. That, that just means set the expectation for the person calling you. And if you have a message on your phone that says, I will be returning calls after 7 p.m. at night by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, that's you setting the expectation for your client or whoever is calling you and they know that you will get back to them. And here's the thing, you have to get back to them at that time that you say. Mm -hmm. so, so don't use that as you, ha you have to have your phone on you 24 hours a day. Just set the expectation the right way when you do have something like that. And there's going to be times where we're also not in front of computers. I, I, as a nerd and a tech, I still love paper. I keep scratch pads. I call them um, grass catchers everywhere because there is a time where I, if I'm on the phone, I'm not sitting there putting the info in. So it's so important that you have a, a lead sheet that also cues you questions to ask that you may forget in the moment, right? Questions that will cue you up to find their motivation. What features are they looking for? Their price range. Have they worked with an agent in the past? Have they already reached out to a lender? Do they need help getting a lender? And all of their contact information. Also, oh, I do have a remarkable ask. I do, but I still love paper. Um, but you've got to take these notes and add them to your command. Guys, did you hear a dog barking in the background? write that down and be like, oh, do you have a dog? I have a dog or I don't have a dog or I love dogs, whatever. But now you can capture a silly piece of information by being attuned to what's going on in the conversation around you. Take and here's a really dog. cool thing on this is like, somebody calls you up and says, hey, what's the price on one, two, three Main Street? You know, what do you say? Do you give them the price or do you ask, say, hey, while well, I'm looking that up, what attracted you to this house, right? Mm -hmm. How soon do you want to be moved into a home? You could take 10 minutes to find that property on the computer while you're asking great questions. And they forgot the that clip. even, yeah. You can also have the sound clip of the keyboards in the background, just saying. <laughs> so it sounds like you're looking it up. You know, we know you know your properties. You can't remember birthdays, but you know MLS listing numbers. It is no joke with you guys. You remember every address, but not a birthday. <laughs> it's true. So, all right, so we've captured, we've gotten them there, we've got info, we've got big beefy cheeseburger databases full of information, we know how to contact them, we're sending them wonderful pieces of value, 
But now we've got to start asking questions. So what are some questions we're going to start asking our buyers to find the motivation? And if you want to put those in the chat again, I'm going to grab all these and we'll add them later to the Facebook group. So don't feel like you're going to miss out. Um, gee, it's on page 96. There are some questions on page 96 that get us all queued up. I was all about those um, open book tests, or if you could put all your notes on a, a, a index card. Did anybody have a professor that did that? That was me writing micro <laughs> all the answers. But that was me. But what are some oh. things we can ask buyers? So I'm seeing back up. And if you would, please tell me a little about yourself. I love that. Because does that sound like you have commission breath? Or does that sound like you're interested to get to know them? I mean, commission breath, not pretty. It's not just like tech breath is not pretty. I love Amanda's. What about this process has you the most nervous? What about this process has you the most excited? I like those questions, Amanda. And then on a scale of one to 10, if you find the perfect house today, are you ready to make an offer? And if they say no, what do you do? Right. I think you got to qualify them a little bit more in, in drill it down to really find what their particular criteria or motivation really is to then to to then ask that question again yeah I I think ask why ask why and i also love hearing when people ask who else is help is making this decision with you is there anybody in your life that's going to go with you that's going to be when we tour the open houses who's really going to help you make this decision because sometimes You've got a party that does not talk about the other ones. And then you get the dad at every appointment with you who also thinks he's a home inspector. Just saying. We love parents. <laughs> the entourage is what I call it. Um, yeah. It's not only about who's going to make the decision with them, but who's financially involved in this transaction. Yeah. Because sometimes we think it is one person and it could be with a partnership or with a parent or something like that. So always asking who is involved in the financial aspect of the transaction is, is another good question to ask as you're, as you're qualifying your buyers. I always like the guilt questions. What impact would it have if you didn't take this action on your son, on your mother, on your brother, on your wife, on your husband, what at right? Like, but yeah. You are a hard-hitting individual, Tiffany. All about the motivation. <laughs> so let's do this again. Let's do it with our sellers. Right. Why? So dig in. Give me some questions. What are you asking your sellers? And a lot of what we said for the buyers can be the same. Right? We're uncovering motivation. My favorite one for sellers is do you really want to shovel the snow in January? No. In February? <laughs> Have you been here? It's awful. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh my God, Bonnie. How much will you be contributing to this purchase to the parents of the buyers? Oh my God. That would shut my parents up in a fast <laughs> second. Like that, they would be like, nothing next like the thought of that is so because my parents are wonderful humans but also want to be a part of every process and i'm a full adult some days so what else we got for sellers tiffany you must have something that punches the gut because it's just how you roll <laughs> <laughs> well it's all about finding the pain right and 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 i after 23 years, I have learned in my life that pain is more is a motivator, right? If it was pain and pleasure, people are more likely to move to get out of the pain than they are if they're in pleasure. So my questions really are directed at what will the impact be? And then the pleasure side of it is picture this. It's January 27th and you are sitting on the beach and you are in shorts and you get a phone call from your neighbor 
who uh, from up north who is shoveling two feet of snow. How does that make you feel, right? <laughs> ha ha to them and wow, I'm in the sun. Beautiful thing. Right. Is, if that's their motivation to move somebody. <laughs> Can you tell what I'm thinking about? Snow's going to be here before I know it. <laughs> I know. I don't understand. I'm not a, I'm not one of those. <laughs> so these questions we're asking, how soon do you need to move? What an uncovering motivate, like that right there. I need to move in the next two months. Well, why? What What's going on in your life that's forcing this so fast? Talk to me about what's going on. You know, or, you know, it could be a financial decision. It could be a huge life change. It could be an illness. There are so many factors that go into the motivation behind what people are doing to sell. I love this one. If you could live anywhere when you sell your house, where would that be, right? So after you get that answer, how important is that to you? Right. How will that impact the people that you love in your life? Now, Brooke, you're not saying that you would live in your Ford. Can you, no. explain, can you explain what Ford means? <laughs> Found on road dead. My husband drives a Ford. No, I'm just kidding. It's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. And I'm telling you, friends, you can use that in every conversation. If you've been in my classes for database to data bank, we go over it in a fast, um, quick little role play. But you can quickly get to people's motivations. You know, oh, God, I see myself a dream. In two years when my husband graduates, I want to do X, Y, Z. Oh, did you know we could get you there sooner? There's so, I love using that. How's the family? Are you still working at KW? Like, have you guys been at the beach this summer? Have you been going in the new Jeepy? How's the baby love the Jeep? If you could make any mods to the Jeep, what would you do? There's a dream. Also, if you have a Jeep that gets really expensive, I am learning this the hard way. There okay, you go. now we know what Ford means, everybody. It means family, occupation, recreational, and dreams. dreams. So Tiffany just put that in the chat. And then the next portion here is asking for the appointment. And if you go to page 101, there's all the, you'll know the person you're sitting across from you. You will, you'll know with practice, which clothes, is it an absolute no? Is it an absolute yes? If you've got people who are, are like, yes, 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 we wanna work with you, great, let's meet. If you've well, got yeah. people that are a maybe yeah. yes, then you get to play within that direct close indirect close so would it be okay if we set an appointment for the next few days so we can get together and really see where you guys are well and i love on 100 the 10 classic closes that work right the hard close i do the hard close the soft yeah. close <laughs> the direct close <laughs> the indirect close the trial close so would today be okay for me to put the lockbox on the house that would be a trial close the assumptive clues, the negative positive clues, uh, negative future, positive future, right? The take back clues, the tie down clues, and the alternative choice clues. Would you like to have the sign on the left side of the driveway or the right side of the driveway? Does tomorrow work for my photographer to grab the pictures while we're still in the summer? Yeah, so on page 101 and 102 of your shift book, you should you should be working through your shift book as we're going through these sessions. They have every single one of these closes with a script. So if, if you're really working the hard close, it's let's meet. That's it. Let's meet. That's all you have to say. You don't have you don't have to you don't have to add any additional words to that other than let's meet for a hard close. And it goes all the way down to what Tiffany was just talking about with the alternative choice close. It says what works best for you meeting today sometime this afternoon or tomorrow morning so if you're looking for what those scripts or those closes look like it's right in your book they're right here for you yeah. don't overcomplicate them say it and stop talking well and i love bonnie if they say bonnie and i i feel like we could be great friends if they say that they want to sleep on it i say i have my pillow in the car can i borrow your couch and a blanket I would die. I would die of laughter. I mean, like, l listen, if you're buying dinner, you can crash here while we decide. I'm out. That's it. So all these things are great that we've talked about, right, ladies? 
But the biggest piece that I think some of our agents really need the help with right now is the cultivating, the making the relationship. Because some of these things are hard to go into when you don't have the relationship there. And that's what cultivating is about. So if you look in command, the cultivating part of your opportunities pipeline is a little plant that has a little seedling glow, uh, growing. And that's for a reason. It's Think about it. It's planting the seeds of opportunity and growing it with the people. If you haven't given any value, you can't come in with the hard close because they don't know you, trust you, respect you yet. And this is where things like knowing how they want to be contacted, what we're supposed to be contacting them with, right? My husband's a medic. He's in school. If he says, text me only, please, and you continue to call him, you lost him because you're not respecting how he wants to be communicated with. Same thing with our database. If you've got people that are like, I don't text, just please call me and update me with the information, you're gonna make them really aggravated by continuing with texts that don't matter to them. What you can do is say, you know what, after our phone conversation, I'm just gonna give you a quick follow-up and text for both of us. Does that sound good? And the great part of the cultivate piece is, you know, logic makes them think, emotion makes them act, right? So you can you can play those two fields in the cultivate stage. You send them a little bit of logic, a little bit of numbers, right? And then you throw in a little bit of emotion. Um, and you have the power of doing that when you're when you're in the cultivate stage. And and we can start small. Guys, this is all there for you free in command as well. These are your smart plans, your quarterly call plans, your monthly neighborhood nurtures. We have to stay top of mind. And by setting yourself up with smart plans, like I said, you're going to open the command up and every day it's going to tell you what to do, who to do, how to do it. These four alone, start small. Take a screenshot with your phone right now. Start small. It's all you need to do. Utilize the smart plan so that you stay more human more often and you never see a sign go in a yard because you forgot a home anniversary or you forgot a birthday or you forgot to follow up. And I'm gonna, as much as Brooke absolutely adores and loves command and I appreciate it as well, some of us are risk adverse to doing new things. Like, and then, so let's talk about Gary in the box, right? When Gary first started the business, what did he do? He had a Rolodex with A to Z and he just went through it. So if you're like, this is all great and I'm not gonna touch command, what's one action you could take today to stay in touch with your people. And then Brooke will meet with you and get you into command. <laughs> so this stuff takes skill guys, right? And what we've always said is practice on your peers, not on your clients. Practice on your peers. You have to know your market, know your numbers. Jen will pound this into your head. It's her favorite thing. Know your numbers. You've got to be data oriented in this skill. If you don't know how to pull your MLS numbers, please talk to your local leadership or reach out to one of us. We will make sure you understand how to pull your hot sheets. You've got to work on conversation skills. Talk to your mirror, talk to your dog, your cat, your kids, any human that's not a client that you can get in front of a practice with, a practice buddy, someone in the market center, your leadership, go on a Zoom call, go to Pivot Shift Live, come see us, we got you. And you've got to preview properties. You are newer to the business and you have no idea what the difference between an oil burner or how a propane setup works in a home. You got to get educated. If you don't know what a gable is versus a colonial, different roof types, you've got to know the basics. We're not asking you to be builders, but you should know what a home shape is. Do you know what a bungalow is? Right? Simple, oh, yeah. simple things. I would also say the preview properties, you never know when you're going to do a market analysis on another property in the neighborhood. And if you could say to that seller, oh, I was in your neighbor's house when it was on the market and they had X, Y, and Z how much more relevant does that make you and how much what if the next agent if they did decide that they weren't okay with you calling and canceling those appointments that next agent comes in and says well this agent went and looked at the property did you or how about this one of your buyers missed out on a property but you see a property in that neighborhood come on the market if you're the speed to lead with that or you just blasted out to everybody. If they came in on a tag for an open host for Rose Hill Bedford, great. Next time you see something on Rose Hill pop out, you send out that email with that information. Conversion rates, calculate yours, okay? Total number of leads, number of futures in your database that you've been cultivating, 
and the number of agreements from appointments. Guys, when you're using command, these things start to come into play and your reports are going to start to populate. Don't lose leads. Can't every single lead is precious. It's making sure that we are motivating them. Are we finding the motivation within them? Or are we putting them on the proper plan? If they're a midterm nurture, a long-term nurture, or those are hot and we're gonna hop on them. If you're not the right person for certain jobs too, you utilize your team. Tim, what does that mean to you? Because I love that because everybody's like, well, I'm not on a team, but there are ways to use other people on a team when you're at a market center. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, do you have an opportunity? Well, let's just talk, let's even simplify it more. There are college students out there that are looking to intern so that they can get college credits or get experience to put on their resume. So there are opportunities out there to get team. Like who is your lender? Your lender could be part of your team. They may have something that you can implement. Who is like, who's your builder? They may have something. Who's your building inspector? Who's the person that puts your signs in place? These are all your team people. Um, so you have a team. You just have to talk about it more. Absolutely. And if you're not good at social media, stop trying. We give it all to you. Just put it mm -hmm. out there. Copy, paste, go. Stop overthinking. Perfection paralysis is nothing to waste time on in a shift. If it's taking you out of lead gen time and you're spending four hours on a design, stop it. Find the person at your market center who will. So we have four minutes left, Brooke. Oh, wow. And they say, they say that if, if you didn't, if you don't take action and you don't put something in place and this was just great info. Yes. So put in the chat, what are you going to implement today? But if you don't know how to do it, who are you going to reach out to? And while we're doing that, and any of the ahas, I'm going to put our pull everybody in. Thank you guys for everyone who is filling out those eval forms. Just a reminder, don't leave because you have to be here to win the prize. Yep. You don't want okay. me to have to call you and say, oh, you won. No, you didn't. You weren't there. <laughs> All right. I love some of these ahas. We have smart plans for new leads, tagging based on motivation. I'm going to use a lead sheet. Love that. I love uh -huh. break the perfection perilous, um, paralysis. paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. Perfection paralysis is a thing. That's why we have the growth call for you guys. And Back to basics. You know what? That's always a good plan, Kelly. Always a good plan. If it gets confusing and just all over the place, go back to basics. I love that. Preview more properties. Begin implementing a lead sheet. Going to talk uh, about real estate with uh, my friends. Master my database. I love you, Eric. That is that, you know, Gary Keller says that, not me, by the way. Yeah, that is a smart, smart thing to take action on. You will not Smart be sorry. Plan. Smart plans. I love that. You know why. All Are right. You, Brooke, All right. Ready? I am. So I've got today's winner. And what you are getting is a motivation basket full of motivational books and all kinds of fun things to keep you going during the lead gen time that you're doing. It is sent to us from our friends at Bad ads watch yourselves bad <laughs> ads digital marketing and they are a fully digital marketing firm to help you with promotions digital branding all kinds of things do not say it fast or you will swear and slip up i really want to like leave it huh, huh, like like gift Summer. of oh. shit <laughs> and don't forget to fill up for next week you can get more prize entries, read pages 109 to 133, and then time block to be with us on the 16th at two o'clock. All right. Today's winner is oh, wait, hour for this. waiting all hour for this. Let's go. I know. Laura Holder. Laura Holder. She's Laura. from my market center. Way to go, Laura. 
Yay, I never win anything. <laughs> Where are you? Hold on. Raise your digital hand. Yay. I'm, I'm I might here. That from you. Excellent. There she is. Hi, Laura. So, Laura Congratulations. Hey. So Thank I will you. reach out to you after today's session to connect you with bad ads and they're going to directly get the basket to you. So congratulations. Great. Thank you. You're so welcome. We will see you next week. Remember pages 109 to 133 and we will see you on Tuesday. Have a great week, guys. Bye. Bye. I knew he was going to win.